I don't I don't I don't understand, bro. I don't understand why this stuff keeps happening, dog. Our entertainers, especially in the hip hop community, they need to be more mindful about staying out of situations that aren't favorable to them. All right, so Tuesday morning, the hip hop community lost another one of its members as Takeoff, a member of the group Migos, was killed in Houston. Um, it's said that the altercation was because of a dice game. Um, and Takeoff is, again, the latest member to lose his life in the hip hop community mm-hmm. over gun violence. Six, how are you feeling about this latest loss to the hip hop community and, and Takeoff? Man. Of course, R.I.P. Takeoff, man. Um, Migos was one of those those rap groups that low key changed the game, man. They mm-hmm. that they legit changed the game as far as like how you rap, like their cadence and how they rapped in their in their songs, especially when they they blew up off the off the song Versace with with Drake and just that cadence that they had is like now they have a different form of rap. People saying Migos rap or Versace rap or things like that. So they they were innovators in the game. Uh, in the hip hop culture, for mm-hmm. sure, and to see Takeoff be killed over an argument that way, he wasn't even involved in, mm-hmm. he wasn't even involved in the argument, um, and it just is 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 so many of our of our black black men, but rappers in general and people in the culture that are being gunned down for stupid shit, bro, mm-hmm. like stupid shit. And they said that his the cause of death in Houston um, was two gunshots wounds to the head, and in his torso that ended ended up going from his torso to his arm and stated in the cause of death. So it's like, bro, like I don't, I don't, I don't understand, bro. I don't understand why this stuff keeps happening, dog. This stuff keeps happening in our community. And I was watching a couple of reports. And I was looking at DJ Academics video, uh, shout out to him, uh, where he was kind of breaking down a lot of the footage that came from the, uh, the 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 bowling alley that they were at having the party. And he said something that was alarming. He said, street culture is synonymous with black culture. Mm. And people believe that if something street or hood or mob like is synonymous with us as black people. And I was, and I, I thought about it, and I was like, "Yo, that's 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 kind of true." Because as far as hip hop culture, hip hop culture is tied with black culture, mm-hmm. and within hip hop culture is a lot of street culture. Yep. And talking about, you know, the ops and what you're gonna do to the ops and drug vi- drugs and violence and this that and the third and the fact that that is synonymous with us as a black community is disturbing, bro. It's disturbing, bro. So let's stick with that real quick. And I I didn't want to, I I battle with how I wanted to attack this segment. Right. Um, Because I felt like, well, naturally, this is always the rhetoric that is played when a rapper is gunned down. Mm -hmm. And you're right. It is synonymous with, well, you're right and academics is right and the people that put this rhetoric out is right that is synonymous with black culture and hip-hop culture is street culture but it's a reason for that and that's that's what bothers me we had this conversation a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. when um, candace owens put out her stats of what she found uh Mm -hmm. the the ills of the black community and is it hurts because yes it's true but the question that never gets asked is, well, why are they are, is the black culture like that? And it's not our doing. And that's where I was trying to say a couple of weeks ago is it's not our doing. We've been Mm -hmm. placed in situations that require us to fight for our survival and we still thrive, but they're unfortunate situations. Um, You know, so the 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 street culture that comes with hip hop culture first off hip hop is just a sounding board for what goes on in the hoods 
Mm-hmm. It's a megaphone. It's, it's not a sounding board. It's a megaphone. It's a megaphone for what goes on. What goes on in the hoods. Most of these individuals that make it to be rappers or basketball players or athletes come from unfortunate situations. The things that they see or have saw uh, have seen in their day to day lives growing up, mm-hmm. they're gonna rap about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're gonna let you know what's going on in the hood. It is unfortunate, but we can't, we, we can't condemn, we, we can't, we can condemn the actions that's being Mm -hmm. rapped about Mm -hmm. because that's not every black person's experience. It is the majority, um, Mm -hmm. statistically speaking, is the majority of the black experiences living in the hood or living in unfortunate situations. Um, but that was going to be my question was going to be to you. And you said that you didn't, you don't know why it keeps happening, but is what can we do about it? If, if that is our experience and it's not, it's not entirely our fault. And I'll, I'll also stand on what I said a couple of weeks ago as well is we don't need to ask. We don't need to continue to ask people to help us out of these situations. We need to figure it out ourselves. Mm-hmm but we weren't the one that put ourselves into these situations. Very true. Very true. I mean, honestly, bro, I don't know what we can do because it's it, the, the way, the way media works is that sex and violence and things of that nature sell drama sells drama Mm -hmm. and sex sells. Um, and unfortunately, if we were, if we've been, we've been put in situations, like you said, you know, unfortunately, put in situations of drama. Basically, that's that's what we're going to talk about. Right. So I don't think that there's anything that I don't even want to say that because there is something we can do, but we kind of need to figure out exactly how to, I guess, better portray the message of what we're going through. Mm. It's yeah. not about it's not it's, it's, most of the time. And I, and I live by this There's a couple of sayings that I live by. This is one of them. It's not what you say, but it's how you say it. Mm-hmm. And I think J. Cole is a really good co- proponent of this is that he knows the struggle coming from Dreamville, mm-hmm. coming from the coming from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Fayetteville, North Carolina was a bad place at one point. Mm-hmm. Kind of still is, but it's a, it was a bad place at one point. And the way he portrays his message doesn't come off as shoot a nigga, kill a nigga, fuck a bitch type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. he had, he, he, he says those things in his raps, but it's like he, the way he relays his message is totally it's different from. It's sprinkled through there. It's not the only message that comes through it. Exactly. So again, it's not what you say it's how you say it. And if we can find a better way to portray our message of the struggles that we do go through with the drama and the sex and everything that, that sells in the, in, in the industry, then it'll be a lot easier for us to get out of these situations. Yeah. And it won't be situations like this happening all the time. And another way that we can, another way that that, that the rappers and the people in these in the people that are in these positions can change this narrative as well is to be modest. Mm-hmm. You don't always have to show what you have or talk about what you have or post where you are or this that and the third because they were actually on Drink Champs uh, here recently. And Nori told him, say, you got to watch what you post, because even though you're just trying to show off and show your fans the things that you have, it's Mm -hmm. people that follow you and watch you that have bad intentions and don't want the best for you. They are looking at your page and see you every day and say, I want that. Yep, I agree. You know what I'm saying? So we just got to be modest, bro. Yeah, Yeah. I agree with that. Um, I feel like. And I I did not say it, so I want to make sure that I put this in here. This this is not a a slap at any rapper that has lost their life. Um, mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that I say it, that, you know, it's deeply regretful and um, not 100%. Regretful, it's deep. It's deeply hurtful that somebody had to lose his life and take off who um, again, was a part of an influential style, a change in the hip hop community that he lost his life to some uneventful, un, um, unlikely scenario that that was the the gun violence that had happened in Houston. But the first thing I thought of coming into this segment was 
our entertainers, especially in the hip hop community, they need to be more mindful about staying out of situations that aren't favorable to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of them are suckered into going back to the hood and spending majority of their time there when they work so hard to get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Um, Jay-Z has a quote that says, people look at you strange saying you change like you work that hard to stay the same. And what happens is most of the time they're the ones that's changed. Mm -hmm. Um, And (laughs) that's true in most situations where we see where we see these rappers being gunned down. Like you said, they're posting their location or saying something of the sort of come holler at me if you want X, Y, Z, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. And somebody comes and hollers at him. The, the only one that I think he didn't post his location, but he was always there was Nip's situation where he got killed mm-hmm. in front of his his store. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other ones, you know, they posted their location or they were in a situation where they had no the 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 odds were not favorable for them, either Very no true. security guard or they saw the situation starting to get hostile and they remained there. Mm-hmm. What was the one thing that our coaches always told us in while we were playing sports? If people get in, if, if you were a group and they get into trouble, your name is going to be in the paper, not theirs. The same is true with this situation. When, sh- when shit goes down in the hood, people going to look to get at you rather than anybody else. Cause you're the one with all the money, with all the mm-hmm. stuff that they want. For so, sure. I just feel like our, our our entertainers, especially in the hip hop community, need to do a better job of not putting themselves in situations that aren't favorable to them. Very true, man. Very true. And I mean, I'm not gonna get into all of the the allegations of who they say did it or who who shot who or who killed you know this that and the third because that's that's the media's job. Yep. Uh, but there are some some inf- there is some information out there if y'all want to go check it out. But it's it's funny because I was doing some research on on takeoff um, because that dude was he was the quietest and the most probably the most reserved one out of the group. Right. But and I didn't even know Quavo was his uncle. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I saw I knew him and Offset were cousins, and mm-hmm. Quavo was the uncle of the group, which is kind of strange. Which is but... kind of strange because they all about around the same age, but which right. which is not you know with with. with it's not it's not that uncommon honestly but yeah, yeah, yeah. um they were about they, they they the reason why they went on drink champs was to promote um a the new album. the album that they got coming out called uh, only built for infinity links mm-hmm. and they were about to drop the album that's 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 going to drop um and they were going under the moniker unk and few uh, which is kind of funny but um he his, his actual solo album that he did back in 2018 actually hit number 4 on the charts which is pretty I dope. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, man. Even though it seemed like Takeoff stood in the background of the group, he was the most loved member of Migos and a lot of people's favorite rapper in the group, even though, you know, of course, Quavo said he, Quavo might have been the most talented of Migos, but Quavo actually was the one that said, hey, he got his name from being able to just jump on his verse and kill it in one take. He was mm-hmm. just take off, on, take off on the beat. That's what they that's what that's where takeoff came from. But gotcha. it's like, bro, like, because I know, shoot, my, my little cousin Pat, takeoff was his favorite rapper in Migos. And I was like, what? Offset is fire. Quavo is fire. I, I really ever hear takeoff. And he was like, nah, bro, listen to takeoff. Because mm-hmm. takeoff is probably the, the best rapper in the group. And the more I listen, the more I realized that he was probably the most talented. And, you know, it's, it's just weird, man. It's just like, bro, I, I just, I just, I just hate that a lot of people. A lot of our people are being gunned down, man. And it's, it's in, in the rap community, it's just weird, bro. It's just weird, and I, I, I want it just needs to end at some point. But you already kind of touched on it. Is that at least one rapper has been killed every year since 2018? Yep. We talked about Nip, uh, he, who was gunned down uh, in front of his um, the front of his store, uh, Victory Lap. XSX Tentacion was gunned down in 2018 of, of, of apparent robbery. Pop mm-hmm. Smoke. A robbery, a home invasion. King Von just out three o'clock in the morning. The argue he jumped out. They kill him. Uh, young Dolph was killed buying cookies in 2021. Yeah. And somebody tried to rob him, drove up on him, shot him. PNB Rock was having, you know, dinner with his family or breakfast with his family at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. People ran up on him. 
And then bet this just this year, back in June, a New York drill rapper named Money Game Vante was killed in a pharmacy going to pick up some condoms. And he was killed in the pharmacy. So it's like, bro, it's a lot going on in the rap community right now. And I just pray that it just all stops, man. Because these guys with all this fame and all this fortune, bro, at some point we have to learn, like I said, just how to kind of be modest, bro. Honestly. Yeah. Um, I I wish I did have like a solution right on hand that we could give to how we can solve this problem. Um, not only in hip hop, but in the black community. But it's it's going to take some time. We, mm -hmm. We're still dealing with traumas, whether people like to realize, like to acknowledge it or not. But everybody in this country is still dealing with traumas that came from how this country was originated. And then from the Jim Crow and segregation eras, we're still dealing with that. I mean, that stuff was just 40, 50 years ago. For sure, So man. it's not just going to leave overnight. And the things that we talk about in our in our culture, in our music is reflective of that. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I'm, I'm not asking, I don't think we need to ask outside of our race for a solution. We need to figure out, figure it out inside of our race and then do it, execute on it. I think until then, until we can figure out a way to resolve or to have a resolution for this, this problem, we're going to continue to see it occur. Um, hopefully it doesn't increase and it, it slowly decreases, but I, I think we'll see this occur for the next couple of years because of, because of the culture that we've unfortunately built for ourselves. 100%, and it's really, man. it's really young. And I, I'm sorry about the, oh, this is my no, last you're good. thing. It's really, it's really the younger group um so to speak that is involved in most of this and and that's because they i'm not gonna say they don't know any better but they're trying to prove themselves in mm -hmm. the the in the street life that they're involved in right now mm -hmm. so if we can find I, I think that may be the first step that we need to take is find other avenues that the young people of our culture can be involved in in a positive manner mm -hmm. then it'll permeate up into the older culture because i mean you and i we're we're in our later years latter years mm -hmm. of the millennials mm -hmm. we don't directly involve ourselves in that culture but we're mm -hmm. aware of it for sure and so if it if it dies at the young age then naturally as they get older it'll it'll slowly trickle itself out true 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 because the, the hip-hop culture isn't going anywhere yeah. but we can we can what we can try to do as a community is change the narrative around the culture and like you said it starts with the it starts with the younger generation because this is the, is as privileged as this generation is Mm -hmm. With all of the technology and all of the things that they've been given that we didn't have when we were growing up in the millennial age, right? Mm -hmm. But as privileged as this generation is, they are very they the influence that the rap community has on this 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 uh, generation is a very that's what I was looking for. Good, good shit, my boy. And they are very impressionable, and the influence that this that the rap community has on this on this generation is astounding because they don't they they didn't go through. Some of them do because they're in that situation, but a lot of people like my daughter or like, like, like your kids or, you know, like a lot of, like a lot of um, black kids these days didn't go through the same struggle that we went through. Mm -hmm. They have a lot more privileges these days than we ever had. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the, the culture that is teaching these, these children, this street culture, the street life. And like you said, they're, now they're trying to prove themselves that they are about what they don't even they didn't have to go through mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so again it's 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 us starting with them trying to teach them how not to be within that culture or what the things that the struggles that we went through you don't have to worry about those struggles so it's more about the message and how we relay it and try to teach the younger generation to move away from that so that way the generation after them can continue to keep that cycle going and changing the culture so that's what we yeah. got to do man 
Yeah, all about education, and we're, we're not mm-hmm. talking about in the school systems, even though that yeah. could be a piece of it. But we're we're just talking about overall education of how to uplift mm-hmm. the black community, and then in turn uplift the hip hop community. So stuff like this doesn't happen any, anymore. That's a fact, man. That's a fact. What it seems like, not what you said, but what the media is trying to do is paint him as a predator, a sexual predator. And True. he had a consensual relationship. Consensual. And I was like, what happened to Quinn Snyder, who was a free agent head coach? What happened to Mark D'Antoni, who was also a free agent head coach? What about um, Mark Jackson, who's been blacklisted for the past like six, seven years and hasn't had a coaching job for forever?